As new telecommunications technology is rolled out across Australia, new products and services become available. Because of this, and recent changes to the numbering plan, geographic numbers can now be used differently. In the olden days, you could only give your customer a telephone number based on their area, so people could tell from the area code where someone lived. This has now changed. Numbers no longer need to be tied down to one specific area, and service providers can now offer their customers an out-of-area number. VoIP service providers can take this opportunity to offer customers this flexibility and help boost business, as long as they comply with the requirements. But you must provide your customers with certain information when you offer them an out-of-area number. So what must you tell your customers? It's pretty simple, really. Meet Jeff. He runs a VoIP service provider, Jeffcom. Not a very original name, Jeff. And this is Laura. She just moved to Sydney after living in Melbourne her whole life. Laura is especially interested in getting an 03 Melbourne number for her Sydney address. She has family and friends back home in Melbourne and she wants them to be able to call her on their landlines and talk till the cows come home. All for the cost of an untimed local call. Sure, Jeff can offer this service, but he must make sure that he informs Laura about two very important things. Firstly, calls to and from Laura's new 03 number will be charged as if she is still located in Melbourne. For Laura, having an 03 number in Sydney is terrific for people in Melbourne wanting to call her for the cost of an untimed local call. But there are potential issues with having an out-of-area number that she must know. Calls from other landlines, including her new friends in Sydney, may now be charged at a higher rate, as if she was actually in Melbourne. Secondly, keeping her number may not be possible if she wants to change provider. Jeff must provide this information in writing when he makes the offer. If Laura is on the Jeffcom website, it must clearly be displayed on each web page that offers out-of-area numbers. It must be legible in plain English and the font must be at least 10 points. And Jeff must ensure that he doesn't bury this important information in the fine print. If Laura purchases the service online, Jeff must also receive acknowledgement from Laura that she understands the information completely. This could be something simple, such as ticking a box during the order process. But what happens if Jeff doesn't follow the guidelines? Laura may not understand why some calls are being charged at different rates on her bill. The same may go for other people calling her, as she hasn't been prompted to tell them her number is out of area. And should Laura decide to port her number to another provider in the future, she may get a rude shock if she finds out that this isn't possible. If Laura complains and Jeff cannot resolve her complaint, she may escalate the matter to the Telecommunications Industry Ombudsman. Then, Jeff may have to pay the TIO the cost of the resolution. The matter may also be referred to the ACMA for regulatory action. Ooh, not good for Jeff. But if customers clearly understand the implications of using an out-of-area number, then you'll be fine. Compliance is simple, and out-of-area numbers should be seen as a good opportunity to keep building your business. Remember, the ACMA is always there to help you understand the rules of the numbering plan. To find out more, head to acma.gov.au.